This is going to be experiment one, basic techniques, table number four, the summary results table. And I've uh, done a little uh, organizing here. I've got, uh, I've done all my calculations for my density. I've transferred each of the temperatures from the previous tables into this table four. And then uh, I've got down at the bottom here, just organized for the pipette, graduated cylinder and beaker, each of my three densities, okay? So I've done all those calculations and let's go ahead and go through this table. So for the correct density of water at this temperature, I need to go to the table earlier in the lab and it's this big table here. And I wanna look at the left to find the number of degrees, which is 26 and the top to find the tenths place. And then I go where they meet. And for this particular one, it's going to be 0 0.996703. And that's going to be density of water. And so it's in grams per milliliter. These temperatures are in degrees Celsius. And now I have to do for the other two as well. So 24.7 is 0 0.997. 1, 2, 0, and we will be writing all these digits. 24.6, 0 0.997, 146. Those are our correct values, and we know those very well to six significant figures. Now for the experimental average for each of these, I'm just going to go down here and average these three values, say for the pipette. So that's going to be add them up and divide by three. So I can find my average. Actually, I'll just put it up into the table here. So it's going to be 0 0.81 plus 0.87 plus 0.87 equals, and then divide by three, 0 0.85. Same thing for the others, so, uh, and I will let you do that, or for your own data, actually. Then standard deviation. Standard deviation is a little more complicated. I will do it for the pipette, and then I will show you how to do it in Microsoft Excel. So the calculation goes like this. So standard deviation, which is represented by the letter sigma, is going to be, uh, I'll set this up for you. It's a very, it's, the, it's like one of the most complex calculations we'll do all semester. It's going to be each point minus the average that squared. So the first one's going to be 0 0.81 minus 0 0.85, my average squared, plus the other two, 0 0.87 minus 0 0.85 squared. And I'm just gonna write it out longhand. It's really uh, the same thing again, but. Yep, that did fit on, good. And this formula is in the introduction to this lab, uh, but uh, then it's gonna be N minus one, where N is the number of data points. We have three data points. 3 minus 1 is 2. So I'll just write 3 minus 1 there. And then you square root the whole thing. And you do have to write out one of these longhand for your calculations. And uh, let's see. So, and I'll keep all my, there we go. So the first one's going to be 0 0.81 minus 0 0.85. So that's minus 0.04 squared, I get 1.6 times 10 to the minus three. Uh, if I shift it into um, just regular numbers, that's really 0 0.0016. You can write it like this. You can write it like scientific notation. Either is fine. So 0 0.0016 plus, now I'm gonna do the 0.87 minus 0.85 
hit the equal sign, then square it, 0 0.0004. And then because the next one's the same, it's just going to be plus 0 0.0004 over 2 square root. Step by step, we'll get her done. So 0 0.0016 plus 0 0.0004 plus 0 0.0004. That's my numerator. I then am going to divide it by 2. That's, that divide by 2 is before you do the square root, 0 0.0012, and then square root. And on my calculator, it's above the x squared, so I'm going to hit shift x squared, and I get 0 0.0346. And the units on this are still grams per milliliter, and we put plus or minus in front of it because it could be higher or lower. And you'll note that there's only one sig fig in these. So really, 0 0.03. That is plus or minus my standard deviation. That is what goes here, plus or minus 0 0.03 in this box right there. Now, um, Let's go ahead and um, do, I don't know if we can do Microsoft Excel. Let's try that. Oop. So let's close that out. And open up a new one. There we go. And let me squinch that in here. And make it a little bigger. There we go. All right, now to do average and standard deviation in uh, Microsoft Excel, you're gonna enter your three numbers. My three numbers were 0 0.81, 0 0.87, oop, 0 0.87, 0 0.87. And then for the average, which it'll do for you as well, it'll be equals average. And you can see it pop up. So you can click on it. Then you're gonna click and drag over the boxes. There we go. And their cell positions appear in your formula. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you'll see that that's the average. And it's very similar for standard deviation. That also appears. There are actually many forms of standard deviation, but we just want the most simple. Click and highlight not your average, just your three data points, your actual data points. And that is your standard deviation. And you see that we get the same number that we had before. We will round this to 0 0.03. That's how you do your standard deviation as well in Microsoft Excel. And I suggest that you do your standard deviation in Microsoft Excel after you do your first one here. So, anyway, and it should have one sig fig, and it does. Now, um, percent error. Percent error is going to be uh, experimental value minus correct or uh, accepted value divided by correct value times 100%. And so let's go ahead and uh, take a piece of paper and do that. So it's going to be 
uh, percent error equals uh, 0 0.85, that's our experimental value, minus our correct value, 0 0.996703, and we will keep all significant figures through the calculation, and then we'll round our answer to the proper number. Then this is going to be times 100%. This will be negative, and percent errors can be negative. 0.85 minus 0 0.996703 divided by 0.996703 times 100%. And this time, where you just stack them up, you'll see that there are two sig figs, so my answer will be minus 15% error. And that one goes in here as minus 15%. Now the ranking, uh, so once you get all of your numbers here, uh, you're going to rank, so whichever one is the smallest number will be your most precise. And I don't expect this is gonna be the smallest, uh, the most precise. And here again, this time it's closest number to zero because it can be positive and negative. Closest number to zero is going to be most accurate. Farthest number from zero and minus 15%, I would imagine that this one is going to be uh, the least accurate, so it's going to have a number three in here. Even without doing the calculations, you can see that the densities are farthest from the correct values for the pipette. And that's taking you through all of the calculations for uh, table number four. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me about, uh, feel free to show me your work as well. Send me a picture. Okay.